Hello, this is Scott Smith from Cobra Firing Systems, and today I am very excited to release a brand new product to you today. It is called the Cobra Audio Box. Now, the purpose of the audio box is you can play audio directly from this audio box into any sound system. When that audio plays, it's going to fire in perfect synchronization with the firing modules that are aligned with your 18R2 firing the script. In today's demonstration, we're going to start off with a very simple demo of the firing modules firing in synchronization with the audio. Then we're going to go into a detailed deep dive demonstration of the hardware construction. We're going to talk about some of the features of the audio box, including realignment, uh, the ability to pause. And we're also going to talk about how the audio box will allow you to easily augment Cobra as a wireless system into existing wired systems such as Pyro Digital, Fire One, Pyromate, and other different systems around the world that can accept a time code feed. So let's go into the demonstration of the audio box with these five modules. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to arm our system. As you know, the 18R2 is going to confirm that all the systems are armed and ready to fire within the field. You'll see in this case we have six devices, that includes our five firing modules, which are set to channels one through five, and our audio box. We're going to press button one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our show, and you'll see the firing modules will fire from left to right, followed by a shot at the end on all modules. Great, now let's go into a deep dive demonstration of the system. The primary purpose of the Cobra Audio Box is to play audio directly into a sound system that's firing in perfect synchronization with the firing modules that are being controlled by the 18R2. One of the biggest benefits of the Cobra Audio Box is that it is a wireless device. So in many cases, your sound system isn't necessarily located in the best position for firing your show. So you can place the audio box with the sound system and as a shooter, you can be positioned in the best position to fire the show. The range of the audio box is the same as the 18Ms, about 1500 feet line of sight without any form of signal accessories, which can increase that. You can also measure the signal strength of the audio box, which we'll cover in just a few minutes. Now, to turn on the audio box, you simply press the power on rocker switch. Once you do that, you'll see that the sync light is blinking, the same as the 18M in response to the 18R2. Now the syncing process of the audio box is exactly the same as that of the 18R2. You just simply press and hold the sync buttons together and within a few seconds, the unit will restart and they'll be within sync. On the audio box itself, you have a few different interface objects. We have the USB port. Now this is used primarily to play audio. And all you do is you place the MP3 file directly on a USB thumb drive. And that thumb drive can be inserted right into the audio box. And that's where your sound is going to come from. That's where your music file is going to come from, is right on the audio box itself. In addition to the sync button, you also have an audio test button. And one of the benefits of the audio test button is that you can actually perform a sound check with the sound system without actually having to fire your show. So you can simply plug the unit into the sound system, press the audio test button, make sure your sound levels are correct, and you'll know that you've got your sound in good, good order. The audio box also has left and right gains, so you do have a left and right volume control directly on the box. You also, for outputs, have two separate headphone jacks. You also have an RCA cable and a quarter inch jack. And we're also adding an XLR accessory, which will be available through the side of the unit that you can purchase at a later date. So let's go ahead and demonstrate some of the basic functionality. You're at a shoot site, you have the sound system, whether that's your own or whether it's someone else's. You're simply going to place your audio box MP3 file directly on the thumb drive. There is some formatting and naming conventions that we will cover later on and also within a separate video. But basically, you're placing an MP3 file right onto this thumb drive. You're going to go ahead and just place that directly into the audio box itself. 
And in this case, for our demonstration, we just have a simple computer speaker system. Obviously, during a show, you're going to have a more complex, more comprehensive sound system. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to use computer speakers. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to plug these right into one of our headphone jacks. And I'm going to just press this audio test button. When I do, you're going to see the green light will turn on. And that's going to start playing the audio right from the beginning of the sound file. So hopefully you can hear that playing currently. If you want to stop the audio, simply press the button again. Now what's nice is if you did have multiple audio files, which is something that we will be supporting within our 3.1 version release, uh, you can just continually press this audio test button and that will actually cycle through the different MP3 files that are within the USB thumb drive. If when the audio is playing, you do want to make adjustments to that left and right volume controls, you can absolutely do that in real time and the sound system will update accordingly. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop the audio again. And again, just to emphasize, you do have the ability to run RCA cables directly into the audio box. Also, you have the ability to plug a quarter inch jack right into the audio box and XLR support at a later date. So, once you've performed your sound check with the sound guy or girl, you have the ability to check your signal strength. Now, for signal strength on the Cobra audio box, all you need to do is simply go to channel 99 on the 18R2. Every audio box, and just a note, you can control multiple audio boxes with a single 18R2. All of them send their signal strength back to the 18R2 on channel 99. Checking your signal strength is no different than checking a module signal strength. You just simply press the sync button on the 18R2. If you continually press it, you'll notice that those numbers will change slightly. So we're getting about a 20 or a 21 at this distance. Same as the 18M. After it displays the signal, it also tells you what the actual address of that audio box is. In this case, the address of this audio box is address 7. Great. You will also notice that when I arm the 18R2, you're going to see here that we're going to display 2. Now, you'll notice that we only have one firing module set up. However, we do have a Cobra audio box. So what's very nice is that the Cobra audio box is also recognized as a device within the field and included within your counts. So for example, if you had 10 modules and one audio box, you would see the number 11 disp display on the 18R2. Now to start the actual script, you would go directly to your trigger channel and your trigger button and Within the actual script file that you loaded into the 18R2, we have added an additional parameter to the header row. And that parameter is the name of the MP3 file that you're going to be playing. So in the majority of cases, you're going to have a single script and you're going to have an audio file, for example, myaudiofile.mp3. In the header row, you're simply going to type myaudiofile.mp3. And we'll cover that within a separate video when we talk about formatting the audio file and the script, but it's very straightforward. If you did have multiple scripts within your script file, for each script you can also define a separate audio file. And that's going to be available within our 3.1 release. Within our 3.0 release, you can only support a single audio file today, which has the name audiobox.mp3. So let's go ahead and start our script. In this case, I've defined the trigger channel to be 1 and the trigger button to be 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and press button number 1. Now when I do that, you're going to hear the audio playing. And also on the left hand side, you're going to see the firing module firing along with the audio. Now what's really cool with the audio box is when you're executing the script, and we're just going to go ahead and disarm and we're going to redo this. So I'm disarming the units and we're just going to rearm the units. I'm going to start the script and now I'm going to pause the script. And by pausing the script, you're going to notice that the 18M is going to stop firing. You're also going to hear that the audio box is pausing. So let's go ahead and start the script again. Now to pause it, simply repress the arm button 
and you're going to hear now the audio has paused and you're going to see on the left hand side that the 18M has stopped firing. Let's go ahead and resume the script. The next feature that we're going to explain is the ability for you to align the 18R2 script relative to the audio while the show is playing. Now what does that mean? So let's say that you're firing your show and imagine everything is firing just a little bit early. Instead of suffering through your show and watching everything slightly out of sync, you have the ability with 18R2 to make adjustments to that script while the show is being fired without affecting the quality of the audio coming out of the audio box or the performance of the 18M in firing each of the different events on time. I'm first going to explain this in theory, just showing you on the interface here, and then we're going to go through a practical example. So on the 18R2 you'll see you have a little plus and minus button at the bottom here. While the script is running, I can press either one of these buttons and that's going to either uh, align forward or align backwards that script by tenth of a second increments. So for example, if I were to start the script and start pressing the plus, plus button a couple times, you'll see on the channel display here that it would display 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Uh, and in the same respect, if I were to press the minus button, a couple times it would then go back down 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0, minus 0 0.1, minus 0.2 and so you can basically shift forward or shift backwards um, by a total of 10 seconds forward or 10 seconds backward. Now you probably never need to go that far but it does have that capability if required. Again it's important to understand that we're not actually changing the rate of playback of the audio so you're not going to hear the audio start to speed up or slow down. Instead the audio is always going to play constant and we're simply realigning the actual firing of those 18M modules with that audio. And what's nice is that there's a lot of checks in place. So for example if you have a very quick firing sequence and you start pressing these buttons back and forth, you don't have to worry about the 18M missing any cues. It's going to know that you're trying to make an adjustment right before it's firing a cue. It's going to fire that cue anyway and it's going to make that adjustment later. So let's go through a practical example. I'm going to simply press button number one and this is going to start playing our audio. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to press this minus button three times. So you'll see now that we have minus 0.3. And you'll see that cue number one and all these cues are actually firing a little bit late. And so you could see there that what that did is it, in our case, we actually had perfect alignment. In our case, we actually caused the alignment to get a little bit worse. Um, but we were able to realign it accordingly. One of the added benefits of having the audio box display within the counts of the 18R2 is that it allows us to build a variety of different checks and balances into the audio box itself. Now what does that mean? Well let's imagine that for some reason the USB did not engage properly. Or let's imagine that for some reason the audio file that you have defined on the script does not match the audio file that has been defined within the USB. Um, basically anything that we can recognize and pick up within the software um, and within the hardware of the audio box, those checks and balances can be put in place such that when it reports itself to the 18R2 saying yes I am armed and I am ready to fire, that we know that everything is in place. So as long as your audio test went properly, as long as you're confident that you have the right audio file name defined within the 18R2, with the only exception of the audio box not being plugged into the sound system, everything should fire perfectly. What's also nice is that when you actually start your show, let's say for some reason the audio box doesn't actually start playing. Well, you have the ability to pause or even disarm and stop the show right away. Um, in the same respect, let's say that your audio box starts playing your audio, but you don't have anything firing in the background. Instead of having um, too much of an awkward <laughs> position where your audio continues to play and you're scrambling, you can simply pause or you can disarm the 18R2 and that audio box will stop. Um, and one of the things that's 
common in other systems to do is to insert, for example, a test tone early on in the audio. So your show may not actually start firing or playing for about 10 seconds, but at the five second mark, you may have a simple fountain um, or a simple e-match that fires along with a simple test tone um, that comes out with the audio box. So if you prep that into your script and you prep that into your audio file, if you hear that test tone and if you see that e-match, pop or your small fountain go, then you know that everything's in great shape and everything's going to fire wonderfully. Um, if it doesn't, you're left with the ability to just simply pause or disarm without creating too much of an embarrassing moment. Let's talk about the construction of the audio box. The audio box comes standard within an SE120 Seahorse case. If we open up this case, you'll see that we have the interface of the unit. On the top we have our antenna clip. This is the same clip that we use within our 18M armored case with our antenna that fits nicely here within the upper lid. On the face of the unit itself we have a LED lit rocker switch. We have our USB port which is used for both loading the audio file and for performing firmware updates similar to the 18R2. We have our sync button for syncing the unit to the remote. We have our audio test button for performing a local sound check with the unit prior to firing the show. We have independent left and right gain volume knobs. And for audio lineouts, we have two headphone jacks. We have a single RCA, a single quarter inch. And we're going to be adding an accessory for an XLR output on the side of the unit. Now what's nice is these outputs, we actually have an additional amplifier added which allows for you to run multiple outputs, in fact all of the outputs at the same time. So for example if you are in the presence of the sound system and you want to have a headphone connected to the unit so you can hear the audio clearly and have this connected to your sound system to play for the audience, you can do both of those at the exact same time. The battery compartment supports three AA batteries. And finally, we have a low battery indicator. Now, one of the things that's unique about Cobra is that we focus both on modularity and expandability. So what does that mean? Well, the purpose of modularity is that we want all the components within the unit easily pluggable. So for example, if you have damaged a specific output jack, or let's say there's a problem potentially with a button, any of these components can be replaced without replacing the entire unit. In addition, you can do those repairs on your own without having to send the unit back to us. So I've already removed the six screws that go on the front face of the unit. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this unit apart. Now, you'll see immediately on the back of the unit <clears throat> that we have a lot of different wires. Well, all of these wires go directly into plugs on the unit. So you can see here that these are all simple plugs that you can easily uh, remove and plug back in. And in addition to that, this single main board, this is really the entire brains of the unit. So as long as this main board stays with intact, everything's in great shape. Um, all of the boards that we produce are gold plated on their traces. Uh, we also human seal coat all of our boards. And you'll also notice within the audio box, there's a number of different expansion ports. So you'll see here that we have different expansion ports here, here, and here. We even have a location here for an SD card if we want to support that locally within the unit. Um, so there's a lot of things that we've done, you know, not just within the audio box, but within a lot of our designs that are going to aid themselves to future development. So that, for example, if we wanted to add, uh, say, uh, a screen interface to this, or we wanted to do really a, a variety of different things that I can think of, we won't have to sell you a new audio box, which is the next generation. We can simply sell you a new component, a new add-on board, even potentially a new faceplate that supports different types of interfaces. So the main core thing is that we have our boards, we we have our plugs, everything's pluggable, and that gives us a lot of flexibility in the future so you feel that you're purchasing something that's going to you know, really support a long-term growth within your business. Let's talk about a really neat feature of the audio box. Now traditionally you think of the audio box as having the ability to play music which is heard by your audience. That's its standard primary function. However, since the audio box is really just a device that can play an audio file, you can also use it to easily augment 
wireless Cobra modules to any existing firing system that can support an FSK, SMPTE, or really any type of an audio timecode signal. So how does that work? Well, let's imagine that you have an existing system and you have that set up within your field and your master controller has a timecode input. Well, what you can do is using a Cobra audio box, you can load the timecode signal directly into the audio file within that USB thumb drive that's going to play. Now, you may choose to have one of the channels, for example, the right channel, play the audio. The left channel may actually output the timecode signal that's going to go into a firing system. And what that means is that when you start the show on your 18R controller, that 18R2 controller is going to fire the modules and it's going to start playing the audio box at the exact same time in perfect sync. Now the audio box is going to be playing the sound system to the audience with the music, but it's also going to be sending a signal directly into your firing system that is going to have that firing system fire its modules in perfect synchronization to both the audio that's coming out of the audio box and the Cobra 18M firing modules. Now that's really cool because when you pause the show on the 18R2, that's not only going to pause the firing modules from firing on the Cobra system, it will also pause the audio which will then in turn pause your third party firing system. And you can do that to drive one third party firing system. Technically you could have multiple audio boxes, one for driving one firing system, one for driving another firing system, another for uh, playing audio directly through a sound system. Uh, you could even just use one audio box for both the sound system and the firing system or you could break them out accordingly because you have the ability to control as many of these audio boxes as you want and each audio box can be playing a different audio file at the exact same time. You could even go so far as to having a separate audio box that only has uh, verbal time cues that someone in a remote area is listening to to perform some form of hand firing because you didn't have enough equipment to manage that area. Um, so using the Cobra audio box you can do a lot of really creative things with using multiple audio boxes, with using different firing systems to feed time code. So it's really kind of creates a bridge in some ways between Cobra and the rest of the world. So we covered a number of different features within the basic operation and now let's just go right back and do those features in real quick succession just so you can see how quickly and easily you can use the audio box. So we've loaded our USB file with the audio file. We go ahead, we turn on our audio box. We're going to plug this directly into the sound system. Once that's done, we can simply press the audio test button. We can adjust our audio levels to get this sounding proper. Sounds great. And we're just going to go ahead and stop that. Now we're just going to simply turn on our 18R2. We're going to turn on our firing module. We're going to let everything start up normally. You're going to see here within test mode, we're going to recognize two units, the audio box and the firing module. We're just going to go ahead and arm the units. Again, all of the checks are being performed and we have confirmation of two devices ready to go. And we're simply going to press button number one and that's going to start our show. So it's a real simple operation. There's not a lot to it, but at the same time, there's a lot of features and checks and balances that make the system easy to use.